Israel, 1991. Iraq launched Scud missiles against civilian populations. Aegis ships tracked the missiles. Taiwan, 1996. China flew M9 missiles at the north and south coasts of Taiwan. Aegis cruiser USS Bunker Hill tracked the missiles. Sea of Japan, 1998. North Korea flew a ballistic missile over Japan. The Japanese Aegis destroyer Miyoko tracked it. Every year, tactical ballistic missiles make their way into the hands of more nations. Nations with belligerent leaders and more rogue states. The greatest danger is the arming of these missiles with inexpensive chemical and biological weapons. But what of a defense? In response, the U.S. Navy has embarked on a Navy theater-wide program that will provide Aegis ships with a weapon system to intercept tactical ballistic missiles in the exo-atmosphere. A weapon that will fly farther than any surface ship launched anti-air warfare missile has ever flown before. A weapon with dynamic flight control in the endo-atmosphere and exo-atmosphere. A weapon system that will incorporate a new kinetic warhead capable of performing the ultra-precise targeting and maneuvering required for effective exo-atmospheric hit-to-kill intercepts. And most importantly, an Aegis weapon system which can destroy tactical ballistic missiles in the ascent phase. To evaluate and demonstrate this weapon, a series of test flights are being conducted. The CTV-1A mission brought the team one step closer to an Aegis defensive weapon known as the Standard Missile 3, or SM-3. The CTV-1A, or Control Test Vehicle 1A, mission was designed to demonstrate the capability of the Aegis weapon system to direct and control an SM-3 missile through the boost and mid-course phases of flight, including the second and third stage separation. This SM-3 configured flight test round, designated the Flight Test Round Zero, had production first and second stages, an inert third stage rocket motor, and for the fourth stage, an instrumented kinetic warhead structural mass mock-up. In July of 1999, testing at the Combat System Engineering Development Site, or CSEDS, in Moorestown, New Jersey, culminated in successful interoperability testing with an SM-3 inert operational missile. Validation included functional testing of search management, radar scheduling, track processing, dynamic test target engagement, missile initialization, missile mid-course guidance, and in-flight control functions. Overall, there were 28 major functional modifications requiring 136 specification changes and 21 interface changes to the ALI Aegis Weapon System computer programs. Through rigorous testing, these functional changes were verified by an Aegis CSEDS engineering assessment process. Additionally, numerous comprehensive design verification and in-process development tests were performed at all levels on the SM-3 missile in Tucson and at several field sites. Several electromagnetic environmental effects tests were also performed. EMI tests were successfully conducted at Raytheon in Tucson, at the Naval Surface Warfare Center in Dahlgren, Virginia, and the Aegis Production Test Center in Moorestown, New Jersey. By March, equipment installation and waterfront testing began on board USS Shiloh at U.S. Naval Base San Diego. Numerous rehearsals were conducted involving ship's force and team members from contractors and agencies, including Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, United Defense, Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, and Naval Surface Warfare Center's Dahlgren and Port Wenemi divisions. Testing was repeated on board USS Shiloh using the Aegis weapon system with the Inert Operational Missile, or IOM, in the firing cell to verify end-to-end -end functionality. Note the newly developed domed cover on the IOM canister designed to accommodate the extra length of the SM-3. 
test unique Aegis directed telemetry antennas were installed. SPY provided precise pointing data to these antennas for KW imagery and telemetry data reception. The extended range required a commercial satellite antenna installation to relay SPY track data, missile telemetry, voice communications, and video teleconferencing to the Pacific Missile Range Facility and other sites for real-time monitoring and safety control. Aegis workbench equipment supported onboard Aegis weapon system data analysis. Missile telemetry stations collected IOM, pre-launch, and in-flight missile data for onboard analysis. The Secretary of Defense visited USS Shiloh to meet with ship's force and review the mission. Shiloh uh, is uh, being equipped with uh, new technology that will uh, certainly uh, lead uh, to the uh, full development uh, of a theater missile defense capability for uh, our uh, Aegis group. Once testing was complete, USS Shiloh departed for Hawaii on 10 September. Additional system and IOM testing was conducted while in transit to Pearl Harbor. Upon arrival, USS Shiloh transited directly to the Naval Magazine at Lualua Lay to onload the SM-3 missile. With all systems ready, high-ranking representatives of the Ballistic Missile Defense Organization and the Program Executive Office for Theater Surface Combatants and senior managers from contractors and support agencies reviewed the test team's preparations during the mission readiness review. On 20 September, USS Shiloh headed out to sea to conduct the CTV-1A event. You are part of a system which for this test includes the range. We believe they are ready. The missile, which of course is in a canister in the ship, and it better be ready. The documentation, the data collection activities, we believe they are all ready. But as so often the case, the prime player is the ship. And we have every confidence, and I said this recently in San Diego, we believe that Shiloh is ready. And this is just the first step in achieving a capability that I believe will have a profound effect on world politics. The name of the game is upper tier, or Navy theater-wide, and Ali is the first step in that process. The primary objective of the CTV-1A mission was to demonstrate SM-3 missile airframe stability and control up through the second, third stage separation event. On 22 September, USS Shiloh arrived on station some 300 miles northwest of the island of Kauai. After completion of numerous dress rehearsals and range surveillance using P-3s and satellites to verify the range was clear, the CTV-1A mission commenced. High-speed film cameras and video tracking cameras were ready. Team members manned data collection equipment. The final countdown began. Captain to request batteries released. Batteries released. All stations, Captain, Fizz is green. DM track. All right, so bridge, hold us within 400 miles. 400 yards of CLP. 10, 10 9, 8, 8 7, 6, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Match open. Missile track number 80047. SM-3 mid-course flight. This flight demonstrated numerous Aegis weapon system functions, including launch, acquisition, track, guidance, and missile uplink and downlink. Missile functions verified included missile angle of attack, position and velocity vectors, body attitude rate histories, stage separation events, and flight termination system. SM-3 third stage coast. The inert third stage went into a slow tumble as expected based upon the SM-3 FTR-0 configuration. 
beacon track, skin detections, and telemetry were collected for greater than five minutes of flight. Future flights will have SM-3 configuration with an operational third-stage rocket motor that will maintain stable flight dynamics through KW ejection. She's going real nice. Missiles at 310,000 feet. As guided by the ALI Aegis weapon system, the missiles successfully completed boost phase, mid-course atmospheric flight, and the second, third stage separation event. Missiles at 350,000 feet. In addition, flight data was collected on thermal, vibrational, and other environmental aspects to determine the impact of each on missile performance. The new Aegis Weapon System real-time capability to extract and relay missile position and velocity data to the Pacific Missile Range Facility was demonstrated. Missile telemetry and range tracking data were collected and compared with the Aegis Weapon System data. Incorporating the lessons learned, the team will prepare for the next flight and move one step closer to demonstrating an Aegis standard missile Navy theater-wide ballistic missile defense capability and one step closer to a sea-based TBMD capability that can be rapidly deployed and readily sustained at critical areas around the world, able to protect civilian populations in any weather, under any conditions, at any time.